Welcome to CAD Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 11.7. So, you're asked to find the RMS value of the current waveform. So, you're asked to find IRMS given this waveform over here. So, the first thing to do is to find the period of this periodic signal. So, as you can see, let's take this point as a reference. So, where do we see this point occurring again? It occurs after two seconds or whatever the unit of t is. So let's say the unit of t is seconds or whatever. So our period, I identified that to be two. After doing that, we now have to find the formula for each of the sections. As you can see, this waveform comes in sections. So in one period, it's actually formed by combining two piecewise functions or functions which occur at specific times. So if you look here, you have your point 0, 0, and here you have a point which is 1, 8, right? So from that, we can find the gradient of this slope over here and then ultimately find the formula. So using y is equal to mx plus c, is what we're going to do. We're going to take these two points to find m, which is our gradient. So we're going to say, we're going to take the top point first and say 8 subtract 1 and 1 subtract 0. So this is 0 as well, because the second point which we took over there is 0, 0. So our gradient is 8. We can just substitute that into your formula. After doing that, we can just choose any other points. Let's just take 0, 0 along that line, along that same line. Taking 0 and 0 will give us a C of 0 which means the formula is y is equal to 8x. And that is for time between 0 and 1. So now let's look at the second slope, which occurs over here. We expect this to be negative because it's going down. This we expect to be positive, as we just found just now. And also, you could have just seen or you could have just looked at this and said, after one step, I've actually advanced by 8, which means this has a slope of 8. And it crosses this point, which means you can just simply substitute your zero over there. But either way, we now have the answer for that section. Moving on to the second section, which is from time one to time two. Now, looking at this section, we're going to do the same thing. Over here, we have two zero, and at that point, we have one of eight. So let's take the top part again to find our gradient and say eight subtracted zero divided by 1, subtract 2. This 2 is from this point of here, so 2, 0. Now that we're doing that, we're going to have 8 at the top and then going to have minus 1 at the bottom, which is going to give us a gradient of negative 8. Substituting that into our general formula and choosing another point, let's just take 2 of 0. So we're going to take 2 of 0, so we have 0 there. Then we have 2 substituted in here. Taking this to the other side of the equal sign is going to give us our C, which is going to be 16, which means for this section, we have Y is equal to negative 8X plus 16, and this 16 corresponds with our Y intercept, and that is between time 1 and 2. We now have the formula for one period of this function, and we can now proceed to actually compute our IRMS. So this is our root mean square, which means we take the root and we take the mean, right? And finally, we take the square. So this is the formula which we have to use. And now considering each of the sections, we are basically gonna split this into two integrals. And that is gonna be, so this is the first part of the question. We were asked to find IRMS. And the second part of the question is asking for the average power absorbed by a resistor of 9 ohms. So let's start by finding our IRMS because the average power is IRMS squared multiplied by the resistor value. So we have to find that first. So let's do that quickly. So you're going to have, let's focus on the integral inside. We found our period, which is this T over here, to be 2. And it's going to multiply everything inside this huge bracket over here. And we're basically going to have from 0 
to one, as we split this function, the whole function over one period is split into two functions. So we're gonna do that as well. And we're gonna use the variable t because it's actually a correct variable, which is associated with our graph. So it's supposed to be a t. Then we're gonna take this squared and find the integral of that. And then I'm gonna say from time one to two, we're gonna use the second formula, which corresponds to this time period. And we're gonna add that to, and then we square that. And all of this under the square root sign is going to give us our IRMS. So now all that's left is just to square this and then find the integrals of each of the sections. So doing that quickly inside, we're going to have half this. Then inside, we're going to have 16. This is uh, 8 squared, which is 64 t squared, right? And we are finding the integral of that. I'm just going to make this longer, I could make it shorter, but let me make it just go step by step so that you follow. And then here, we're gonna have 64 t squared. And in the middle, we are basically going to have this, which is negative eight multiplied by 16. So eight times 10 is 80, and then eight times six is 48. So you're gonna have 128. Then you're going to multiply that by 2, so you're going to have negative 2, 5, 6, t. And in the end, you're going to have, or at the, at the opposite side, you're going to have 16 squared, which is the, basically the same thing as here, which is 2, 5, 6, dt. So now I have to compute the integral of this. And doing that quickly, you're going to have, so not forgetting the square root again. So the square root of all of this, now computing the integral, we're going to have 64t to the 3 divided by 3 over 0 and 1. Then we're going to have 64t to the 3 divided by 3 from 1 to 2. Then we're going to have the negative of 256t squared divided by 2. Then we're going to have plus 256, that is over 1 and 2, and 256t from 1 to 2 as well. All of that in this huge bracket. And then now computing the integrals, you're going to have, um, so let's put it down here. So you have enough space to substitute. So you have half of 64, 1 over 3, subtract 0, plus 64, 8 over 3, subtract 1 over 3, subtract 2, 5, 6, right? 4 over 2 from this point, 2 squared is 4, so 2 over, over that, subtract 1 over, and then finally, plus 256, this is 256 over here, I'm going to say 256, 2 subtract 1, all of that in this huge square root sign, excuse my squeezing, so all of that is in the square root sign, you're just basically going to compute all of this, so just basically put half, multiply by 64, multiply by that, plus 64, this is basically 7 over 3, 2, 5, 6. And then here you have 2, subtract that, which, which is 1 and a half. And then here you have 1. And then after computing that, you should get your I RMS as 4.619 amperes. So we've answered the first part of the question, which is finding I RMS. And then after that, we're going to compute the power which is absorbed by a resistor of 9 ohms, and doing that, you're going to say this 4.619 squared multiplied by 9, an expected answer as given in the textbook is 192 watts. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, and if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up.